Well, hey guys, what's going on? It's Samantha from Lone Crow Adventures, the channel where we talk about all things camping, hiking, and backpacking. I am super, super excited because we have the hot tent out here and it's the first hot tent camping of the fall 2020 season. I'm so excited. I'm so glad that you guys get to come with us. We're gonna head off and we're going to go process some wood. Now we brought a ton more wood with us than what we're gonna need for this trip because we like to fill several different bins in our garage full of small little pre-cut pieces that are perfect for that hot tent stove. So that way when a weekend comes up and we decide that we want to go hot tent camping at the drop of a hat, we don't have to worry about firewood. We just grab a couple of those tubs, throw them in the Jeep and go. So we got a ton of wood to get processed being that this is our first trip of the year. Let's go ahead and do that now. Now, processing wood, as many of you woods men and woods women know, is a really time consuming thing and it actually is pretty physically demanding. So I ask, why am I going to use a handsaw if I can convince Sarah to use a chainsaw? <laughs> What do you think about that birthday present? You know, it seems like a lot of work for a birthday present. I mean, you know, my back's really, I think next year's birthday present should be sawhorses. They would, they would really like me like a hand in a glove, you know, but it's fantastic. This is 15 bundles of wood, which would have taken us like a week probably to hand process. And it, I don't know, what has it been? Like an hour, two hours maybe? Shoes. I'm ready to take on some bigger projects, I think. <laughs> all right. Well, now we got to split all this stuff up. Got our wood splitter right out That's here. That's all you. That's me. I, I did my half of it just because I have a power tool and you don't have a power splitter. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for me to get to work. Got to split it up all small for the hot tent stove. Now, Sarah, could you walk the viewers through kind of your strategy with lo loading the stove up and getting a successful light? Well, basically, I like to put like the smallest stuff I have here on the bottom out of the bottom rack because we use these seven minute burn strikers and it's fine if you put it on the bottom, but then it can't actually reach the top to actually ignite anything. So I like to make sure I have some like little wood down here, the smallest wood that's going to catch. A key like ingredient, which we recently harvested from our UP trip, is this fantastic birch bark. Which, if you put a couple pieces right down in here, then when you ignite it, it like it takes off like crazy. So. Jam a couple of these in here. All right. Sarah is our, our stove technician. She deals with all things related to the stove, except for the cooking. I got promoted to chainsaw technician this trip, too. I'm really busy. It's a lot of important got a lot jobs. of letters after my name. Get your birch bark in there. You see that? Boy, it really crackles. And then, it's kind of important you actually shut the stove at first, even though you're not sure if it's going to keep going, so that it can start drawing, because that helps it get going. So I kind of, I watch it while it's shut. So you can hear it starting to draw. You can. It's drawn good today. Yep. 
had really successful fires this trip. Well, Sarah's inside dealing with the stove and getting it running. Like I said, she's the stove technician. And the campground is starting to get busy because people are rolling in. It's a Friday night now. Last night was great. Thursday night, nobody was out here, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and start making dinner. I get really, really sensitive to onions. You know, when you cut them, I tend to, my eyes water and I cry a lot. So I don't want to do that inside the hot tent. And it's such a nice day. I thought, why not? Just get everything for dinner ready while we're outside. So, I think I'll probably even put half this on in here. So, what is on the dinner table tonight, you ask? Well, we're going to try something different. We're going to be making a chicken country fried steak, I guess is what it's called. We're going to be baking some cornbread in our pipe oven, which that's going to be uh, first for us. And then we're going to have some spicy black beans. I wonder if the neighbors find it strange that you're sitting at a picnic table by yourself cutting up onions. Talking to myself? Talking to yourself. <laughs> I would um, find that was strange if I was driving by and somebody was cutting up onions. That's true. They'd be like, where's the fire? They don't even have a fire going. It's in the tent. The best thing, I think, is, and this is, I don't know what kind of person this makes me, but I feel a little bit superior to everybody else because they're going to be really cold, oh, right? Yeah. And I they'll mean, be having, like, hot dogs and, <laughs> you know, all your standard stuff. Oh, my goodness, my onions are, oh, boy. Stinks. I'm yeah, onions always smell. <laughs> so I have never made uh, a country fried steak. You know, I'm from Canada. We don't really eat country fried steak in Canada. It's not really a super popular thing. It's a southern thing. I had it for the first time. Oh, see, I'm already starting to cry. Woo! Woo! Had it for the first time when I was camping at Mount Mitchell in North Carolina. We were camping on top of a mountain. There was rain coming in. Rain, 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 rain. And there was this little mountain restaurant at the very top of the mountain. So we went there, we decided to go there for dinner because it was just raining so bad. And that's where I had my first front, uh, country fried steak and my first exposure to cornbread. So um, that's what we're going to try tonight. I'm using chicken because my wonderful sister-in-law likes to come over to our house and drop off random food to us that uh, her family's not going to eat. And we had some ground chicken and I didn't know what to do with it. So thank you, Amy for helping to sponsor the meal today with your chicken. I'll let you know how it turns out. Boy, I am just really making a mess with these onions. It's hard when your eyes are watering and you're trying to cut onions. It's like, oh, I can't see. <laughs> so I'll catch up with you guys in a few minutes after these onions are cut up because this is oh, it's going downhill fast. Add my ground chicken. I think I'm going to go ahead and put two eggs in it. Why not? Alright, we'll start by mixing all this stuff together. Now, ground chicken behaves a lot differently from ground beef, so keep that in mind. You may want to stick with the ground beef if you're a little more accustomed to making it. Then to bulk it up a bit. Got some breadcrumbs. Now, I never measure anything when I'm camping. I just kind of go until I think it's enough. Might need a little more. You can never have too much, right? Or maybe you can. I don't know. Got some garlic. I like garlic, so we're going to put in a lot of garlic. And why don't we throw in some fresh chives. Got some oregano. And 
I need to add some salt and pepper too. It smells good. Now you just got to get your hands dirty. Well, the campground is really bustling. There's been about, I'd say, four families come in. In the last hour. Which is kind of unusual, because this place is usually... Well, this year with COVID, it's been off the rails. All the outdoor spaces have just been off the rails with the pandemic. Oh, looks like I'm going to have extra. Come on over for dinner. Gonna have some extra. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and add some flour. I'm gonna add a little bit of chili powder. And some more salt and pepper. Give that a good mix up. The chicken is gonna have so much flavor, we don't need to have a really flavorful, flavorful breading. And now we're just going to lightly bread these. All right. All right. There's the first one. I think that breading is going to help it to have a little bit more structural integrity, too. Really kind of pat it down. And now we're ready to make the cornbread. So I just bought this cornbread mix. Never made cornbread before. So we have to add some milk, which I measured that at home before I came out. An egg. And some melted butter. Mix it all up. There we go. And now I have these little mini loaf pans. I'm not sure how many cornbreads, little corn loaves, we'll be able to make. I think we'll probably get two out of maybe three. Yep, looks like we're gonna get two little loaves out of this. Two little loaves. All right, and into the pipe oven with you. Uh oh, uh, don't fall apart. Ow, I burned myself. Oh, take one for the, the dinner. Take one for the dinner, she says. Open up the oven. There we go. There's one. And there's two. These magical little chicken patties have been cooking for a few minutes. Turn them and see. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, this one's gonna fall apart. Oh, we lost a piece. That's all right though. Mmm. Operation Rescue Cornbread. They're almost done. They've risen so much, though. 
Oh. We're gonna move them to the bottom rack. Oh, you caught that one just in time. That one is almost done. The bottom, the back one cooked faster. As yeah. kind of thought it would. Yeah, then you can just take that little rack right out. All right. Operation Rescue Cornbread has been a success. I think they need, what, another two, three minutes? This one will be done first. The one in the back needs several more minutes, at least. Although now they're on the bottom, so they'll cook faster, so who knows. Oh, it's a perfect little cornbread. Oh, perfect. Check it out. Perfect little cornbread bun. Got a couple of these little chicken patties. Oh, this is going to be good. I'm going to try the chicken first because I'm most curious about this. And this isn't like really like a country fried steak. This is, I don't know, country fried chicken hamburger. I don't know. Mmm. Wow, it's really good. Mm -hmm. Holy smokes. Mmm. Mm hmm. Yep. This can make a reappearance. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, Sarah has a really interesting method for eating her cornbread. Mm. Way better with honey butter. Mm. She just kind of smushes it up and throws well, honey butter all over it. Mmm. Boy, this is quite the feast. Alright, go ahead and do you want to try those chickens? Let me know chickens. what they taste like. Yeah. Oh, that was cornbread. It was really good with honey butter. They were really good. Are they really good? I Perfectly cooked, not overcooked, not burnt in any way. Delicious. Very good. All I right. think they can make a repeat appearance. You think so? Mm -hmm. Even the cornbread? Most well, not get carried away, but it is actually way better with honey butter. Mom's like real tough a tough. Wow. What? Baby's looking at pictures of baby pandas on her phone. Look, look at the way it sleeps. It's panda cam. It's that new little baby panda at six weeks old now. Oh, mama's licking him. She's you, cleaning him up. Yeah, look at the way she's sleeping. Their leg in the air. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's tired. She's uh, tired, mom. And she's not the only one who's tired. So are we. So we are headed to bed, and we'll catch up with you guys in the morning. This is the happiest sound in the morning. Coffee just perking, the stove roaring. Mm, it's gonna be a good day. Good morning, everybody. We're getting ready to have a little hot tent breakfast. Super excited. This will be the first hot tent breakfast of the fall season this year. And you know these delightful sausages? Mm. This tent is going to be smelling really good in a few minutes. Perfect. Oh, it's running away from me. Oh no. these English muffins in the oven.
secret to make it extra delicious is a liberal use of honey butter on the English muffin. The owl wants some. He's hooting. Mm. And breakfast is served. Well, let's try it out. Oh, look at all that honey butter dripping right off of there. That's what I'm talking about. Mmm. It's really good. The funny thing is, I'm not taking a picture and videoing. Oh, you are? Yep. I just thought we should see what Lone Crow looks like at hot tenting. Taco Panda. <laughs> Love little panda. booties either it's taco panda or it's coffee sloth one of the two and a plaid oh, yeah, my shirt I like those. lovely and this is just my uh duluth trading company shirt this was a gift for my lovely wife that's right for christmas and let's go back to the lovely part <laughs> <laughs> well getting packed up here Getting ready to head out. No more smoke coming out of the hot tent. You can kind of see here, two night burn. We've got some creosote built up here. So we'll have a brush, we'll clean all these pipes out. Not too bad on the inside, but we'll give them all good brushing off before we pack them up. Well, a little bit of rain coming down on the top of the tent fly. Sarah's over there making fast work of cleaning the stove. Stove technician hard at work. So, Sarah, would you like to tell us how we were able to get packed up so quickly this morning? Yes. The really chatty ranger came around and chatted you up. And I packed up everything and you were not in the way. And I think it was like record time. So, except for the tent, which got packed by you. And as you can see... The straps are not quite right and it doesn't fit in the back. So what I'm hearing is that you would prefer that I do nothing more often. Um, because it's faster. Well, I think it's important that you keep packing up the tent and try to get a little more practiced with it. Okay. I'll try harder next time, boss. Oh. <laughs> How much does this tent weigh again? 20 something? 33 pounds. Oh yeah, she's a beast. Okay. The tent, not my wife, the tent. Hey, I'd love to wait 30 <laughs> It has been an awesome hot tent weekend. It felt so good to get that stove fired up, to get some good cooking going on. It's just great. If you haven't hit that subscription button, go ahead and do so now. And if you're a first time visitor to the channel and you're still here with us, Go ahead and check out this playlist. It's the best of hot tenting 2020 and features some of the trips that we took last winter and early last spring. And if you're looking for more hot tenting content, stay tuned because we're going to get more of these videos up in the next few weeks. Until next time, folks, we'll see you on the trail.